No one is 100% certain about what the flat earth looks like, but the azimuthal equidistant projection map that is used by the USGS is the flat earth map. The United Nations, oddly enough, uses the flat earth map as its logo and divides it into 33 Masonic sections. The Gleason's map is also used as a representation of the flat earth. On the flat earth map, north is in the center while south or Antarctica is surrounding earth with the continents and oceans inside. Mercator's map from 1569 is also a flat earth map showing a magnetic mountain in the north with four continents surrounding it. The ancients had their own depictions of a flat earth. Who's to say there is an edge? Most people's first reaction to flat earth is that there must be an edge, but is that because of how it is presented to us? On the current flat earth model, there is no edge, but rather a 360 degree wall of ice surrounding earth holding the oceans in. Again, no one is 100% certain that this ice wall exists, because for more than 50 years, there has existed an international Antarctic treaty stating that no civilian can travel there without government approval. There are pre-approved guide tours that exist, but they only go to coastal regions. Jarl Antoy was arrested and fined when he traveled to Antarctica without permission. We do have many pictures of the ice wall, but due to the treaty, we are restricted from going down there. On the flat earth model, the sun circles over the earth in a clockwise manner and fades off into the vanishing point of perspective, or the horizon. The sun does not actually sink to the ground, but rather it gets further and further away until the observer can no longer see it. The sun is not 93 million miles away, as modern astronomers claim, but it is obviously closer and smaller. The sun only gives light to about half of the plane, while the other half is night. Although there has been much debate about this in the community, I think we can all agree that it is the sun circling above us, not the other way around. Ships do not disappear over the horizon, but rather they disappear into the horizon, with the vanishing point of perspective. The argument of ships going over the curve can be easily debunked by using telescopes, binoculars, and good zoom cameras to bring ships back into view of the observer. No matter how good the zoom is on the camera, ships will never be able to be brought back into view if they went over the curve. This is proof that the ship only appeared to disappear because of vision and perspective, not the curve. Just because the earth is flat, that does not mean that your eyesight is infinite. The human eye can only see a certain amount of distance on a clear day, and even less on a cloudy day. It would be impossible to see across an entire ocean because the human eye cannot see that far. It has everything to do with perspective and nothing to do with the curvature of the earth. On the flat earth model, circumnavigation simply means traveling east to west. If you go east for long enough, you will end up back where you started, and the same goes for west. Ferdinand Magellan's journey, which was credited as the first circumnavigation of earth, just circled from east to west around the flat earth. This doesn't prove that the earth is flat or spherical because it can work for both models. Red Bull dive from 128,000 feet, you can notice that the outside cameras are wide-angle lenses while the inside cameras are not. In other words, the outside cameras have added curvature, but the inside cameras show a flat plane through the window. 
Not only that, but he lifted off from New Mexico, where already the curvature from the cameras started early on, and all we see in the view is New Mexico. Either the whole Earth is New Mexico, or it is a wide-angle lens. Notice how the Earth isn't spinning either. This question is not possible to be answered because no human being knows what is underneath the earth. The farthest any human being has ever dug is 8 miles, so not even heliocentrists know what's inside the earth. When people think of a flat earth, they think of a disk in outer space, but the whole concept of outer space is ludicrous with the baller theory. Many ancient cultures across the plain support the notion of earth being held upon pillars, but the fact of the matter is, no one can ever know for sure what is beneath the earth. No, on the flat earth model, the earth is stationary and is motionless. Earth is sitting still beneath our feet and it is actually the celestial bodies, such as the sun, moon, and stars, that revolve around us. No one has ever, can ever, and will never experience motion from the Earth, which is astonishing because mainstream science says that the Earth is spinning 1,000 miles per hour while hurtling 67,000 miles per hour around the sun, with the solar system shooting 500,000 miles per hour through the Milky Way while traveling 670 million miles an hour through space yeah, we can feel none of this. It might sound crazy at first, but satellites do not exist. NASA claims to have satellites, space stations, and telescopes out in outer space, sending back fake CGI images and videos for everyone to eat up. The truth is, however, these are all hoaxes, and that explains all of the terrible CGI editing we receive. Just think about it. If there are really over 10,000 satellites orbiting Earth as we speak right now, then why can't we see any pass in front of the moon, not even small specks? The concept of satellites was originally created by a Freemason science fiction writer named Arthur C. Clarke in a magazine titled Wireless World in 1945. There are thousands of miles of fiber optic cables in the oceans that supply up to 90% of communication, internet, and phones on Earth. GPS runs off ground-based cell towers. Satellite TV ditches, which existed before satellites, are almost always aimed at a 45 degree angle directly towards the nearest cell tower. NASA has been caught using camera trickery with the ISS space footage and using multiple green screen effects with astronauts and harnesses to fake the appearance of zero gravity. Bubbles have been caught floating near astronauts, and NASA even admits that they do training in underwater facilities. The moon only appears to be upside down because the observer is viewing it from a different angle in the southern part of Earth than the observer in the northern part of Earth. They're simply just seeing it from an opposite angle. Ancients portrayed the moon as rotating across the sky, almost like a wheel, and there are some pictures people have taken of this happening. The pictures we see from NASA of Earth from space are badly photoshopped. It is so obvious that even they admit to photoshopping the cartoons, such as data visualizer and designer Robert Simmon, who once said, it is photoshopped, but it has to be. This only proves that these blue marble images are not real, but fake cartoons that NASA has given the public. After analyzing many of the images, you can see that there are duplicated cloud patterns, and in one of the recent releases, 
they spilt the word sex into one of the clouds. The oceans aren't even the same color. Neil deGrasse Tyson said that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, or pear-shaped as he likes to call it. But this contradicts the images NASA has of a perfect spherical Earth. There are no pictures of Earth from space, but fake photoshops that we've believed are real. The light of the moon is totally different than that of the sun. The effects it has on plants and food is different, and even the temperature is different. In the sunlight, the shade is always cooler than the sunlight itself. However, in the moonlight, it is cooler, while in the shade it is warmer. The moonlight couldn't be reflecting the sun's light, because then it would have the same effects in temperature, but it appears the moon is emitting its own light, and is translucent. The phases are a function of the moon, and it is not a spherical ball of rock reflecting sunlight as we are told, but rather is a transparent, self-luminous disk. If the moon were a sphere, then we should be able to see the other side along with different faces, yet we see only one side. Not only that, but many people have taken images of the moon with stars being seen through it, and in the afternoon, you can see the blue sky right through the moon. Just look at these Muslim and Freemasonic depictions of the moon with the stars shining through it. Yes and no. It is obvious that there are lights in the sky revolving above our heads called stars, but the mainstream version of what we believe about outer space is simply not true. The only reason we believe things about outer space is thanks to Hollywood, school science books, and government space agencies. No one knows for sure what those lights in the sky are, but all we do know is that they appear to be moving around us and that we are in the center. The sun and moon appear to be the same size because they are the same size. Mainstream science wants you to believe that the reason the sun and moon look like the same size is because the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon and 400 times farther away. They say that this is just a coincidence, but that is their way of trying to explain why they appear to be similar sizes. It is fairly obvious that the sun and moon are both circling overhead and are both equally balanced opposites and are the same size. Many skeptics like to use eclipses as proof of a globular Earth because of the round shadow that is cast upon the lunar surface. They claim that the Sun, Earth, and Moon align in a perfect 180 degree syzygy with the sun casting Earth's shadow on the moon. The only problem with this unproven theory is that over 50 times in the past 2,000 years there have been lunar eclipses where the sun is still in the sky as the shadow is being cast upon the moon. This makes their theory impossible because the sun would be behind the ball earth in a straight line with the earth and moon making it the only way for the earth's round shadow to be cast on the moon. However, in many eclipses, you can see the sun in the sky at the same time as the moon, so the angle of the 180 degree syzygy is not the case, and the round shadow on the moon couldn't possibly be from the earth. The ancients had their own explanation for this, known as Rahu, or the black sun, which is a third celestial body we are not told about that eclipses the sun and moon and is the same size. Ancient cultures described Rahu as a dark body and that it is what caused eclipses, not the Earth's shadow. Whether it is actually Rahu causing eclipses, I feel we need more evidence, but this was the explanation the ancients had for eclipses.
one ball earth proof is that sinks, drains, and toilets all spin one direction in the northern hemisphere, while in the southern hemisphere, they spin the opposite direction. This is known as the Coriolis effect. However, in the same house, people can observe water draining in different directions. If water spinning in a direction was the primary result of Earth's motion, then water should never be seen spinning in different directions in the same hemisphere, yet this is exactly what occurs. The water will drain based on the shape of the basin or the direction the water is flowing in, but not because of the Earth's shape. This trick is easily done by pouring the water in and draining it in the same direction. This is just another excuse to keep the globe earth model going and proves nothing. When comparing the amateur pictures and videos of what we know as planets, it is obvious that NASA's pictures of planets are CGI fakes. We don't even know what planets are, better yet what shape they are, other than that there are lights in the sky. Ancient cultures had their own description of what we would call planets. They knew planets as wandering stars, because they were lights in the sky, just like stars that wandered in their own unique paths different from the other stars. The word planet itself is just the word plane with a T added to the end of it. Planets, or wandering stars, are not what we have been told they are, and using lights in the sky to prove the shape of the earth beneath your feet is not a valid argument to be made. Gravity was originally thought of by Freemason Sir Isaac Newton, who claimed that instead of objects falling due to density, rather they fell due to a mystical pulling force in which a smaller object can be pulled or attracted to a bigger object. Of course, gravity can be observed nowhere in nature, and scientists claim to have recently discovered gravitational waves, yet they still can't even prove it with experiments. Gravity also seems to be fickle and selective and not only is it a force that pulls objects to the center of the spinning ball earth, but it is also a force that allows heavenly bodies such as planets to orbit around bigger bodies. How is it that a force can be strong enough to hold oceans, buildings, and people stuck to the earth, yet just weak enough to allow bugs, birds, and planes to fly freely in every direction? How is it that gravity can keep the oceans from flying off into space, but weak enough not to sink a sailboat. We are also told that gravity is what allows moons to orbit planets and planets to orbit around stars. Either gravity should cause people to stick to the Earth, or it should cause people to orbit the Earth. It should either allow the moons and planets to crash into the sun, or it should cause planets and moons to orbit the sun. Both functions are clearly different. The natural world around us was explained by the laws of density and buoyancy, in which objects fell due to being denser than the air surrounding it, or being less dense than the air surrounding it, so it rises like a helium balloon. Density and buoyancy are the only reasons why objects fall or rise, and gravity can be found nowhere in the natural world and is a hoax. The sun circles over the earth from tropic to tropic, so when the sun is circling at the Tropic of Cancer closest to the North Pole, or the center of the flat earth, it is summer in the north and winter in the south. When the sun is circling nearest the southern Tropic of Capricorn, it is summer in the south and winter in the north. Since the sun is smaller and closer than we have been told, it is more logical to think that this is the reason why we have seasons. If the sun was 93 million miles away, we should very rarely experience temperature differences, better yet, not four distinct seasons. The 
The sun is not 93 million miles away like what we have been told, but rather it is close and circling above us. The sun cannot be observed from every angle at all times on the earth as it passes by, so time zones are caused by its motion above us. Every 15 degree demarcation point around the circle is one hour, giving us different one hour time zones 24 times a day. NASA claims to have landed six of their Apollo moon missions on the moon. When looked at with the skeptical eye, however, it is clearly obvious that these moon missions were faked along with the rest of NASA's achievements. NASA has lost all the original Apollo moon landing footage and telemetry data, and no one is able to verify if any of it was even authentic. Many of the pictures have Earth copied and pasted into the backgrounds, and the shadows are pointing in different directions, proving that there was more than one light source. The sun should be the only light source on the moon, so all the shadows should be in the same direction, yet they are not. When looking at pictures of Mars, the hills of the Martian landscape look oddly similar and almost exactly like hills in Arizona, Australia, Egypt, or even Ireland. If you remove the red tint in the images that's been added from Photoshop, you'll notice that Mars looks exactly like Earth. Some of the Mars rover pictures are just computer-generated animations, while the videos are all filmed here on Earth. The only time we ever see curvature is from NASA's fake CGI images or fish-eyed lenses on GoPro cameras. Many who claim to have seen the curve from an airplane window have to consider the curved glass and the fact that the horizon rises to the eye level of the observer. On a ball, the horizon would drop from eye level as the plane rises, but that doesn't happen at all. Instead, the horizon always rises to eye level, which is impossible on a globe and is only consistent with a flat plane. People sometimes see a slight curve from the window and forget that they are looking out at a flat horizon. In the mid-1800s, a man named Leon Foucault began swinging pendulums with pins placed down and a ball and socket joint so it would swing in a circle. He claimed that instead of the pendulum moving, it was actually the Earth moving beneath it. However, this can easily be debunked because there is no way to start a pendulum in motion without giving it slight lateral bias. Some pendulums would swing too slow, some would swing too fast, some would swing in the opposite direction, and some wouldn't even swing at all. Although Foucault's pendulum doesn't prove anything, they are still being used across the world as proof of Earth's motion. Earth, north would be at the center of the Earth, and south would be anywhere extending away from north. A compass will always point north, no matter where you are on Earth. The North Pole would be just how the ancient cultures knew it, magnetic north. The ancients called it magnetic north because they believed that towards the center of the flat plane, it acted like a magnet. This is why no matter where on our flat Earth, when you hold a compass, it will always point to north, which appears to act like a magnet, drawing you to that direction. If anything, north and south seems to make more sense on the flat earth than the ball earth. We are told that craters are holes in the earth caused by the impact of a meteor that has crashed onto Earth. Although this is what we are told, it is far more likely that these craters or holes are caused by gas bubbles from below the surface, or even a sinkhole. If craters were actually caused by a burning ball of rock from space, leaving that big of a depression, 
then the rock itself should still be there inside the crater. Not only that, but there should be pieces of the meteor scattered around from the impact. Yet at all of these supposed meteor impact crater sites, there could be no trace whatsoever of any rock from space left in the hole. Meteors are just like moon rocks. NASA presents us rocks that they tell us are from outer space, and we believe that these are space rocks, only to find out later that we were lied to and that they are actually from Earth. Comets are shooting stars, which are not terraformer rocks, but rather lights that shoot across the sky. Many meteors, such as the one in Russia that broke school windows, don't appear to be normal rocks falling from the sky. It seems more possible that these meteors are just military objects that are being shot from airplanes at an angle to have us keep believing in meteors. These meteors appear to always be shot at an angle downward. If they really were rocks from space, then they should be hurtling down at all sorts of different angles and not the same one every time. No one is entirely certain if there is a dome or firmament above us. What we do know is that many ancient cultures portrayed a dome above a flat geocentric earth, and even the Bible speaks of a vaulted dome or firmament. There were military operations conducted in the mid-1950s, such as Operation Fishbowl, where the military shot rockets up in the sky, and they exploded as if hitting a dome. Although this is compelling, it is foolish to accept the existence of a dome based off belief without evidence. So for now, the idea in existence of a dome remains unknown. No, flat earth is for every human. Even though there are many religious people in the Flat Earth Movement, Flat Earth itself is just the shape of the Earth and has nothing to do with religion. Based on the evidence surrounding it, any human can become a Flat Earther and awaken to one of humanity's greatest lies. The Bible does give what appears to be a flat-like motionless earth, but it does not bluntly state that the earth is flat. Not only does the Bible mention a dome, but it also speaks of the earth being on pillars, the sun and moon both being luminous bodies, and speaks of Eden as a paradise with four rivers flowing out of it, just like the Mercator projection with four rivers flowing from the north. The Bible was written before the heliocentric model was ever thought of. So why wouldn't it show a flat stationary Earth? The Flat Earth Society is Controlled Opposition. The concept behind controlled opposition is as Vladimir Lenin once said, the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves, meaning that the state, government, or secret societies control the leaders of the opposition against them, such as the Flat Earth Society. In other words, the Flat Earth Society says ridiculous things that will most likely steer people away and turn people off from the Flat Earth topic and dismiss it as ridiculous. For example, the Flat Earth Society says that gravity is not density and buoyancy like we clearly see but instead, the Earth is rising upward at 1G to account for gravity and why objects fall. Every person who hears this immediately thinks it is ridiculous and is turned off, which is exactly what the Flat Earth Society was designed to do. Their theory clearly doesn't make sense, because why wouldn't the Sun and Moon crash into the Earth? And how would there be a flat disk rising upwards in space? It is controlled opposition, meant to turn you off from Flat Earth. That's it.
Freemasonry is the world's largest and oldest secret society, ranging up to 5 million members across the plane. NASA is full of Freemasons and run by them, and most of the heliocentric sciences throughout history were Freemasons, such as Newton, Galileo, Copernicus, and even Pythagoras was touted as one of the first Freemasons. The Jesuits and the Vatican own and fund almost every major telescope in the world, including one they call Lucifer. The Jesuits are also known to be connected, or even possibly created by Judaism, and Zionist Jews have control over banks, industries, and corporations. Even Freemasonry, the secret society pushing this deception, is shown to have been created by Judaism. If you want to control someone, then the best thing to lie to them about is the very world they live upon. The world is run by psychopaths who want to keep us enslaved and lie to us. They tell us that we are just one out of a septillion other planets in space. They want us to think that we are meaningless and that we evolved from monkeys and that our lives have no purpose at all. They don't want us to know about our true origins, about where we live, about our creator such as God or even about our lives having meaning. They have made themselves as the highest authority and the keepers of the scientific knowledge, and we all work as their slaves from nine to five every day, absorbing their lies as if it's truth. They have replaced our divine origins with the cosmic coincidence known as the Big Bang, and hide from us our true spiritual power and place on this intelligently designed flat earth. No, scientists, pilots, engineers, and even some members in the government in lower positions are not even aware of this massive deception. All these people went through the same garbage schoolbook lies and indoctrination that the rest of us did. The only people who are aware of this lie and pushing it are the ones ruling our world, whoever they may truly be. For example, if Earth were truly a spinning ball, then why would the United Nations use a flat Earth map as their logo? Obviously, the true powers know something that we don't, and the rest of us are left here to discover it on our own. The Flat Earth topic never ended, but just died down, and there are many great researchers leading the movement. In late 2014, Eric Dubay published The Flat Earth Conspiracy, which was the first Flat Earth book written in nearly 50 years, and he began to make YouTube videos on the subject, and started the International Flat Earth Research Society, known as IFERS. There are great Flat Earth YouTube channels to check out, such as ODD Reality, Beyond the Imaginary Curve, and many others including myself, who try to use basic facts and repeatable, provable observations as evidence. It took me about 8 months of research before I finally accepted the Flat Earth reality and decided to make Flat Earth videos. Flat Earth is not a PSYOP. Just like many other great truth movements, the Flat Earth movement has CIA agents, shills, and controlled opposition who try to steer the movement off course by using non-provable, repeatable, observable facts, but instead try to mix in disinformation with the Flat Earth truth, making it look ridiculous. If you can look at the observable, improvable facts, then you will be able to see the disinformation and avoid it. There are many great researchers, YouTube channels, and websites to visit who are spreading the Flat Earth message. If the earth is flat, then that means we are created by intelligent design and are not just advanced monkeys on a spinning ball going nowhere, but instead, our lives have a purpose and meaning. Humanity knowing its true origins and potential will cause an awakening which will destroy all the other lies we have been told. It isn't about the actual shape of the earth that is the true matter. 
It's about the lie. The very fact that the psychopaths running our world would lie about the place beneath our feet shows the importance of knowing about the true shape of the Earth. The globe Earth model opened doors to many Freemasonic deceptions such as Darwinian evolution and alien space invaders. The flat Earth truth is one of the most important truths we can know, and it will bring down the system that has enslaved us and free humanity from the greatest of all deceptions. So there you go. You still think NASA went to the moon? If you still believe that, you're ridiculous. Okay? You're just ridiculous. So much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.